Quit, quit. Hey guys, this is Jennifer from the Shooter's Mindset. We are live with episode 362 of the Shooter's Mindset. Uh, I've got my co-host here, Greg Cannon. How's it going? Awesome. Got my new laptop, so hopefully like we won't have technical difficulties this time. Did you get new internet too? I It's mostly the laptop that just like stops working. Oh, okay. Well, here's for a smooth new year. <laughs> we're hoping, we're hoping. <laughs> All right. And our guest of the hour, that is really who everybody wants to talk to, not us, is Justin Jacobson and Austin James from Utah Air Guns. How's it going, guys? Awesome. Going great. Awesome. Thanks for having us. So we'll go ahead and jump in. So for anybody that's unfamiliar with y'all, um, which our audience is mostly uh, centerfire, rimfire shooters, not air gun shooters. Um, so we're kind of branching out, which is exciting and fun and new. Um, but for those that don't know you, I want y'all to one at a time, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved in this industry. Okay. I'll go first. I'll go first. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, again, my name is Justin Jacobson. Um, I got into the air gun industry, um, by way of hobby, honestly. So, um, I got into high-end, you know, precision air guns years ago. And um, I used to own a gas station and, and restaurant stuff. And, and I decided, hey, you know, it'd be kind of cool if I could just buy those at dealer cost, you know? <laughs> so, so I, uh, and where I had a brick and mortar store, I thought, I'll try it. And I, you know, applied for, you know, accounts for a few manufacturers and, and uh, got set up and I started just kind of selling air guns like word of mouth after that and um it kind of evolved and evolved and it got to where it was getting busy enough where it was kind of awkward in a gas station <laughs> you're walking out of the back holding guns all the time like oh, maybe this so uh i opened a, a separate location which was called utah air guns and um went from there um so started out from the from, as a hobby and in a, in a convenience store so who knew <laughs> how long has it been open uh utah air guns by itself has been what five years i think six yes. oh six years yeah six so, years yeah so austin um he came into it a couple you know a couple years in so yeah so i think about four years ago justin you know and i were talking so he's married to my cousin so that's how we know each other. But yeah, he's, I really hadn't had much experience in the shooting world at all. I was working in tech and uh, he was like, hey, I'm selling a lot of these air guns. Uh, need some help with like website, you know, some of the marketing stuff. Do you want to come on board and partner and see what we can do? So yeah, that's how I got into it. And it's it's been a blast. It's an awesome industry growing, which is fun. And that's what I'm about is like, hey, how can we share the, the good word of air guns so it's been it's been awesome yeah even if he didn't let you come to the ag cup i know well he had his choice <laughs> he had his choice I, we were like right in the middle before christmas so yeah. it was like a little yeah. hectic getting orders out and everything but yeah so we kind of have to split some responsibilities up sometimes but yeah it's all good i was i was jealous though i love tennessee so <laughs> yeah. yeah it was a good time yeah, next year I'll be. <laughs> yeah, so it was awesome. We, yeah, he did miss out. <laughs> he lie. missed out. It was good. It was good times, and so we got to shoot some air guns. Um, yeah, I think everybody really enjoyed it. Actually, yeah, I, I mean, it kind of sounded like that was the the buzz a little bit after was over. And I'm gonna be reaching out to you. Those things are awesome. Those were a lot of fun, and and. Uh, I think it opened a few people's eyes as far as like, hey, these things are legit. Like, th these could be fun. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so yeah, it was a good experience. And I mean, for for me to be able to be at a match like that and get to meet all the people, you know, all the all the who's who's in the industry that way, and so it was just awesome. So yeah, it was a good time. So, so what all does Utah Air Guns sell? Just air guns, or do y'all have a lot of accessories? 
Yeah, we, we sell, I mean, pretty much anything to do with shooting other than firearms, honestly. So uh, a lot of the accessories and, and, and things cross over quite, quite a bit, you know, I, where we sell mostly high end um, air gun stuff. So you have, you know, you know, we still sell sky pods and we sell, you know, AccuTag weapons and we sell night force and we sell, you know, um, thermal. Right? Yeah, we sell all kinds of thermal and night vision, um, all kinds of fun imaginable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but we just don't sell firearms. We kind of stick to our, stay in our lane and, and do the best that way. So it's fun. So. Oh, I can't read the chat. Let me open it. Yeah, now I can read it. I thought that said shred. I was like, what are you shredding? Oh, I shared. I shared the posts of our live stream around to all of the different groups so that people could all join us. I hope some of you guys joined. Awesome. Gotcha. So that was fun for y'all to sponsor the AG Cup. Um, I thought it was really great to have a sponsor that's not a traditional um, PRS sponsor there. Like we've had a couple others like Zoom Bait, um, Genesis Diamonds that are not really firearm industry. Well, you're a firearm, but you're not kind of the same, you know, not the usual that we've had in there with all the center fire and rim fire stuff. So it's kind of neat to see um, some new faces sponsoring our sport. Um, so we want to thank y'all for that because that's really amazing um, and, and very cool. And I hope that you got some return on investment in that and, um, you know, got some new customers out of it, which I think you did. I think everybody, it was neat. Y'all had a side stage um, where people could go down and um, shoot at different targets. Y'all had the little KYL. If anybody shoots 22, they had the little 22 KYL. Um, that's like, I mean, the small one is like the stick. Um, yeah. So, it was, um, I mean, to be there, like I said, it, it's fun being kind of the, the new guy on the block in that in that uh, area because I mean we got to meet um, all these new people and and that's one thing I noticed about that community is everybody there is just solid like they, they mm -hmm. really do care about each other there's no you know animosity or drama I mean you know it's there's just there's a time to be serious obviously and and be competitive and, and you know there's definitely that like you gotta have that focus, but meeting all the people in it. And I, you know, have shot a bit of competitive stuff and I thought I knew a decent amount and I learned that I didn't know jack shit. <laughs> so, um, so it was, yeah, it was, it was, it, the return on investment was just, I mean, even if it was just for all that we learned that day for that week um, and just to meet everybody was well worth the return on investment right there, so. I think my favorite was watching all of the kids shoot. Mm -hmm. what, what, watching the, the whole Truett clan out there. The Truett clan. I mean, they were, the, these kids were just chewing up those targets of the air guns, man. It was impressive. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, lots of fun. So, they are. They're, they're always fun at matches. So, We've said air guns a lot right now, and I'm sure everybody, you know, here is kind of thinking about, you know, old faithful you got behind you right there, you know, you'll shoot your eye out, kid. Right. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> stuff has uh, stuff has changed a lot over the years, um, you know, since last time I really looked into air guns seriously, you know, when I was not quite old enough for a gun, and you know, it's, you know, who do I want the, you know, the pumper up or the spring or what? So let's kind of go like somebody that has no idea where air guns are now and, and how far they've advanced past the beautiful red rider so let's start with how are they powered do you know am i gonna be i know they shoot pretty fast is my arm gonna fall off trying to pump the thing up or is there an easier way now definitely definitely easier ways of doing it now um yeah they've they've changed from the old red riders in not only just how they operate what propels you know, the, the BB or the pellet, um, but just um, power factors and calibers. Um, so they've changed drastically. Even in the last five years, air guns have evolved immensely. So um, now most of the guns that we sell 
uh, run on compressed air, so high pressure air. So anywhere from 3,000 to 4,000 psi. And um, so you'll fill them with a, with, you know, like a scuba type tank, uh, uh, you know, a fill reservoir tank that's, you know, filled to 4,500 psi. You, you attach it to the gun that has its own onboard reservoir, fill the pressure up and uh, go from there. And um, yeah, so they've, they've, they've changed a lot. So now we're shooting like the you know, pre-charged pneumatics. All right, so I got this. There you go. There, <laughs> there we go. go. <laughs> yeah, give a visual. A lot like that, but they. So I got this. So how do I? Yeah, uh, look it up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My, yeah, it yeah. Works, right. <laughs> in, in, a, in a nutshell, that's how it works. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna blow your house up. Listen, it's there's only well we're not gonna talk about how much gunpowder's right there. We'll be fine. You're totally gonna. Yeah. So but most guns will look like something behind us now. Mm -hmm. So with a built-in uh, air cylinder, um, different styles, but basically, like Justin said, takes 10 seconds to fill your gun up and then you're ready to shoot. So depending on the calibers and power levels, you know, the efficiency is kind of decided by that, like how many shots will get per fill. Um, and it's pretty crazy some of the, the oh. <laughs> calibers and power levels they're putting out now. So they're definitely fun. So you said how you know so I got to fill it up and then how many shots can I shoot like approximately is it five ten? So uh, in the standard calibers, when I say standard, I mean like one seventy seven through thirty caliber. I would say you could a, an easy average number would be forty to fifty shots. Okay, cool. So I could like. I've had range trips that I shoot less than that. So like, if I just needed to go test something zero scope, I could fill it at home, Yeah. go zero and not worry about it. Yeah. Well, and you have, you know, like the type of guns you guys shot at the AG Cup, I mean, some of those, I mean, they're getting well over a hundred shots per fill. Um, and that's where you get in, you know, the high end stuff is just a lot more efficient and precise. And, uh, so yeah, they can go a long ways. That is awesome. So, so you said standard calibers. So, standard calibers would be like you know my my one seventy seven over here. Then you know like my dad, he had a twenty two and took the big pellets. But what what else is there out there nowadays? Yeah. So, like you said, twenty two used to be the big boy. That was like, hey, <laughs> you want to step it up in that one seventy seven or twenty caliber in the old Sheridans? You stepped in a twenty two, and that was. Now, I mean, we have. Zeus. Yeah, we just gotta. We got the Zeus, it's 72 caliber. <laughs> and I mean, like the Air Force stuff, you know, 50 cal, 45 cal. And we're talking, you know, 400 grain, three to 400 grain projectiles all day long. Um, yeah, big boys. So, damn. Yeah. Those aren't going to get 50 <laughs> shots per build. We're going to get about one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, that is, that is crazy. A 50 cal air gun. That's, yeah, it's crazy. Like I said, what the air guns have evolved to, I mean, when you went from being like, ah, oh, yeah, plinking birds in the backyard to shooting Cape Buffalo in Africa, it's like, okay, yeah. things have come around a little bit. <laughs> a little so, different. Yeah. Yeah. We had a customer go over there with a 50 cal and he shot a lot of big games with his. So yeah, they're, they're getting pretty crazy. Yeah. <laughs> he shot a hippo. Yeah. He killed a hippo with an air gun. Yeah. What do you say to that? You know, that's actually wow. crazy. That that's ridiculously like there there was something on Facebook that I've seen a couple times over the past week of like it shows the muscles of a hippo. Like it's you know it's animated and it's like you know if you think it's fat, you know look at this. This is the muscle structure of it, and it's just like it, it's it's ripped. Hippos are ripped. So. That's kind of how I describe myself to my wife. <laughs> exactly. But I decided it looks pretty fluffy and deaf, but I'm ripped. I'm ripped. But I'm not saying you describe yourself as ripped or as a hippo. Both. Hippo. Terrifying is is important. I, I I always tell the ladies, I'm like, I got a six pack, but you know, I don't want it to get hurt, so I got to put a little bit of padding on the outside. <laughs> of it. That's all. Yeah, works great. That's, I think that's probably why I'm single. That's a pretty bad pickup line, but. Um, I was about to say, does that work? 
uh, no, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So one thing about these uh, that I'm just taking a wild shot in the dark as somebody that spent a whole lot of money on on ammunition, but it's probably a little bit cheaper. Yes, very much. Definitely, <laughs> ammunition is uh, is is definitely cheaper on the airgun side for sure. But what about how, how much is a fifty caliber air rifle projectile? Let's see. So you get about a hundred for thirty six bucks. So they're they're definitely more than the pellets. Yeah, the, the big old the big slugs are are definitely a little bit more. Um, but, but your average, you know, twenty two. 22 caliber, 25 caliber. I mean, you're two to three cents a piece. Yeah. That's, that's even cheaper than cheap 22. Yeah. Yeah. I think my favorite part about air guns, other than uh, being so quiet, you could shoot them almost anywhere, is that I don't have to clean them much. <laughs> I hate cleaning guns and I'm not good at it. In fact, I have a shotgun in pieces in my, in my gun room right now that I was like, should I just give up? I'll look, I'll look at it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was i was thinking about that earlier actually as i was building my little suppressor cleaning station here i'm like you know i bet you these air gun guys don't have to deal with this it's no like, we, we, and you know suppressors i'll have you know is a taboo word in the in the air gun language because <laughs> we don't call them that um we we call them moderators moderators we're not, we're not regulated by the demand so um we can ship ours to your door <laughs> so, but you know i mean i mean it sound as cool as a suppressor but we you know same thing. the whole point is to not sound at all yeah that's, that's right exactly that's right yeah you can make these very very quiet which yes. is probably the best way I think. <laughs> yeah i uh i i noticed how uh how quiet they were out there at ag cup it was a nice break after you know filming inside of the shoot house of everybody with their six whatever flavor yeah kind of the opposite of what was going on the rest of the day there that's for sure yep um so i'm going to head over for a couple of live ones real quick actually i'm going to hold that one uh but aaron hip said buy an air gun from utah stat he loves his <laughs> that's aaron right aaron played with him for a long time mm -hmm. right. And get one air and get spiral tuners for it, because that's even more dope. So yeah, get it today. <laughs> today, right right now. Go to, what's the website? UtahAirGuns.com. Yep. That's a, it's a easy yep. to remember website. Yeah. A little funny story about Aaron Hip. You guys probably heard about it. But he, um, we, we host a big air gun match, and um, it's here in Utah. And, Part of it is part of the course is a precision rifle course, like like you would see in the the PRS of the NRL 22. A lot of similar target styles there and shooting. And uh, Aaron and um, Dave Preston got air guns three weeks before the match. Three, four, yeah, things like. I said we're gonna weeks. come, we're gonna come uh, show you guys that's done. I thought, yeah, <laughs> heard this before. Another another firearms guys gonna come show these air guns. I do it, and they usually get worked over pretty good and they showed up after three weeks and crushed <laughs> yeah <laughs> definitely uh yeah aaron aaron uh, took first and uh, dave was third so yeah, yeah. <laughs> i i remember seeing his and his facebook post that he made was something real similar to that I, I just started laughing he's like yeah so a couple weeks ago we bought these air guns and uh decided to go and shoot this match so we went and i came in first and he came in third and <laughs> I was like, that's no big, well, the best guys in the world. It was just kind of, yeah, we did it three weeks later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, going to AG Cup and being around a couple of guys like that made me realize I don't know a lot. So, but I'm learning. So, yeah. Yeah, but, you, you, you can learn a lot from those guys. They're incredible shooters. Absolutely. So, so let's talk a little bit more about the the gun itself. So what what kind of action are these? I know that we 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 don't have to pump a spring or rack anything like that. We got our air, but are they bolt action, semi-auto? Yeah, here I'll grab one off. So most most of them that we sell are going to be a a bolt action like this or a side lever. So it just is like a pendulum bolt. 
Um, so they have a magazine system. Uh, as you cycle, mid advance another public magazine, just like anything else, and then and then uh, fires from there. So super smooth, easy. You know, there's not a lot. You're just cutting basically to engage the trigger more than anything. Um, I mean, there's a hammer there, and but you know anything you would notice by by cycling the gun. So that's how most of them work. There are there are some uh, semi autos that are super fun. Um, more, more so for like the hunting and planking rather than the you know precision stuff so far, but the majority of them are are something like you see like that. So. And getting to play with them, it is a really fun, easy to easy to run action. It um, is very easy. I mean, it's smooth. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they're they're uh, they're, they're super fun, easy to easy to shoot. No so. recoil, yeah. And like kind of back to watching the kids shoot. I think, you know, we get a lot of kids in here, uh, parents getting them on these, to, you know, teach them safety, the basics of shooting, which is awesome. We love seeing that. So they're really easy for, you know, people that haven't shot to get familiar with, you know, basic gun knowledge and safety. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome. Now on, on to the triggers, you know, these are, these are again, they're, they're air guns. There's no way the trigger on that is as good as my precision rifle. That's it, gotta be a heavy trigger or something, right? Yeah, no, these, yeah, these piece of gun triggers and air guns, they're getting pretty heavy. They're, you know, four to six ounces. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, that was absolutely insane feeling yeah. those triggers. Yeah. They were super easy to shoot. Yeah, it, it really was, you know, lo loading the mags, putting the mag in, even though I got to say, I got a higher capacity mag in my... You do have, yeah, that would hold a few more. <laughs> it's like 850 or something. I loaded it one day and I don't think I'm ever going to load it again. I just dropped it. I don't know where it went. Um, but so, yeah. That, I mean, what did you guys think? Because I'm always interested to hear more like feedback from, because we shoot them every day. We can sit and tell you how cool they are all day, but you guys got to shoot them for a minute. What was your, I mean, what was your first impressions? It is actually, Jen, why don't you, let's both do this. And Aaron Hip, I ended after adjusting my air gun and I run six ounces in PRS. <laughs> See, there you go. DQ'd, Aaron. DQ'd. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought they were very easy to shoot. I mean, we went out there and y'all had those little tiny targets and I was like, an air gun. <laughs> okay we'll see and i laid down and i was able to clean that um KYL. the kyl thank you my brain's not here i'm yeah. in like match prep um but the kyl i was able to clean it like first impact second impact third went off the side i had to figure the wind out because it was pretty windy too mm -hmm. but figured the wind out and then had no problem with the rest of it i mean it was it was very comparable to shooting a 22. Mm -hmm. a, a high end 22. Mm -hmm. you, you can feel there's nothing cheap on the guns. No. It's a, everything feels like, you know, it's made to handle some abuse, but everything runs so crisp and so clean. There's no greediness on anything. The, uh, the accuracy is definitely there. Um, you know, it, it's very consistent where it hits, besides for when the wind starts switching back and forth i had no win for a couple of shots and i was you know hitting my same impact on every plate and then the wind started switching and you know yeah yeah wind definitely affects more yeah. but it is nice uh, we've had a lot of guys getting into these for that practice of you know you're getting that same effect of long range shooting but you don't need to go get a thousand yards right um for doping and wind so they're great trainers, you know, and we've got a lot of guys getting into them for those as well. So, yeah. yeah, and we we just had somebody ask a, a question live if you guys could speak kind of about some of the advantage of uh, allowing the shooter to stay in practice with an air gun and uh, a shorter distance versus having to, you know, load up a rifle and go to the range. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, with, with air guns, again, the – you get really good trigger time because you can you can go you can shoot you know or Facebook you can find a hundred yards even um, you can mimic shooting you know six eight hundred yards with it with a center fire so um, 
you, you, you get a lot of trigger time for cheap. Um, you don't have the noise, you don't have the recoil. So, it, you know, you're not necessarily learning bad habits either. So Crazy um, ammo. <laughs> it's, it's like a dry fire practice, but a lot funner <laughs> because you actually still get to shoot. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's good practice time and it's, it's cheap, you know, it's, uh, you can shoot a lot of pellets for, for not much money, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, things got a bit crazy for us too. And with the ammo shortages <laughs> and a lot of people, you know, getting into them for that reason with the prices and shortages. So yeah, pellets, pellets are here. <laughs> that was another, that was another Aaron hip comment. He said, uh, seriously, <laughs> they, you, air gunners are spoiled. They don't understand. They're like, wait till we get into this because we won't just buy like, you know, a few tins, got these, these precision shooting guys, you know, we're going to buy like, you know, 10,000 cases. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. so uh, yeah, it did get a little crazy. Once people realize like, oh, this is, this is a great way to shoot. And, and they're just a ton of fun. So mm -hmm. well, for, I think for PRS, um, it would be great. Even if there's not an air gun match around, like yeah. how cheap is it to practice? Like the fundamentals are the same, right? absolutely trigger press being stable like you can work on getting stable with an air gun um and a lot of those air guns had chassis that were very similar to what we run yeah so you know to get one and be able to practice for dirt cheap because the pellets are so easy you know i just yeah yeah and i, I would like i said i would compare it to um almost like dry fire drills but with reactions <laughs> because um you i mean you can't mimic the the prepping for recoil like you are shooting with the center fire let's be honest because they don't recoil at all um so that's good you can learn good and bad habits, but you do have to learn positions to set up to manage recoil this i'm just repeating what i heard at the match so <laughs> bear with me but uh no so no but the they're, yeah, you can practice for next to nothing. Um, I mean, obviously the, the guns are, are you know, a little bit pricey to get into, not in your, not in the PRS world, they're, they're still cheap. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, to the average guy, you know, buying a, a $400, you know, bolt action rifle compared to buying a $2,000 air gun and an air tank to fill it and, you know, it's an investment, but once you have it, you shoot for very, very cheap, so. I'll say after what I uh, what I paid just for um, just for twenty two ammo alone today, that two thousand dollars for something that shoots cheaper ammo sounds uh, quite nice. Yeah. So we're going to jump around a little bit. I've had a couple of people asking. Um, I think Regina started it off asking. You know, okay, I know all sorts of stuff about real guns. Know nothing about air guns. What about scopes? So we we're going to get into that, kind of talk about some of the stuff that carries over from one gun to another. And we talked about that a little bit when we were talking about what you guys sell in your store. But what are those scopes? What kind of scopes do you guys run in, on your air rifles? Um, we, there's, a, there's, there's kind of a bit of everything up there. But, I mean, uh, you know, we sell everything from, you know, night force attackers to, um, you know, we have kind of a little bit of everything in between. We've got stuff in that, you know, thousand dollar range. We've got stuff in the, you know, mid, mid uh, five to eight hundreds, you know, like. Sell a lot of Athlon. Sell a lot of Athlon. We sell a lot of Element Optics, um, some Hawk stuff. Uh, yeah, so we have a little bit of, a little bit of everything. I mean, you know. So I could, I could just take my extra Gen 2 Repuser that I've just happened to have, just, I don't have, a, I wish I did, but, you know, I could take, a, a razor i could take a night force could take anything and, and just throw it on there and it'll work just just the same there's nothing special just because it's an air rifle yeah so yeah that's a good point to make um and that's where we go back into like what what's evolved there again first you know when you had the brake barrels or the good old red rider i mean those all run on a big compressed spring and a piston so you have actually like a reverse recoil going on which will just absolutely demolish scopes. I don't care how good it is, unless it's designed specifically for those type of air guns, it demolishes them. Stuff like this, you can run literally whatever. Um, the only thing we tell people is 
you know, keep in mind uh, a lot of scopes, if they don't have an adjustable parallax that goes down to short range, because you, you are going to do a lot of shooting at, you know, 2025, 20, uh, stuff like that, where if you don't have a scope of parallax down, it may not be the ideal scope for, for an air gun. But other than that, that's about the only requirements, really, because there's no recoil, there's no, um, you know, you're not going to destroy scope on this on this type of air gun. So. And, and typically we shoot a lot of high magnification because we're shooting small stuff at, for, at long distance. So, yeah. Nice. What about, uh, what about Aaron Hip? I think uh, he makes something that you can bolt onto an air gun. He does indeed, he does indeed. Um, so he, uh, he's developed this, uh, this barrel tuner, just like you see him. Uh, with, with center fire rifles and rim fires, but now he's uh, developing some for air guns. And man, he threw it on one of the uh, raw air guns that we that raws rapid air works. Um, but he threw one on on one of those guns while we were at the match. And I said, Aaron, you're the, you're you're the you're the master of this. By all means, teach me the ways. And uh, I mean, it was amazing how quick he took a gun. Uh, shooting decent to incredible, just throwing that uh, that barrel tuner on there and, and and tuning it the way it should be with that with that barrel tuner. It was impressive. I mean, I watched I watched a couple of guys pick that gun up after that and just I mean they were putting you know two inch groups on those plates at 100 and 150 yards. I was like, well, <laughs> all right, there you go. <laughs> John Wade asked, what do you guys mean by high magnification on your scopes? Um, I mean, just, I mean, we sell a lot more, we, we're, we don't do a lot of like three by nine, more, you know, four to 16 to five to 20 to, I mean, up to, you know, 35 power stuff. So um, we just don't do a lot of the lower magnification usually. I mean, on, depending on what style of shooting you're doing, obviously, you know, so, but a majority of it is a little bit higher magnification because we are shooting, you know, these little teeny, targets or you know, yeah, similar to like all. a lot of NRL 22 yeah. setups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. They are small. Yeah. I mean, the targets we were shooting were small enough that it just, didn't, I mean, you needed a scope to. Yeah, you know, and I, I guess, you know, we, we don't need a fix 60X magnification, you know, and it's also what you're doing with it. You know, you can ask somebody, what's the best scope for a Ruger 1022? Well, you know, if you are shooting at 50 yards, or less and you know you're you're shooting at pie can, pie tins and stuff well then whatever the cheapest thing with an x in it is yeah. you know if you're going bench rest and you're shooting you know the same exact distance every single time it's going to be a different scope if you're shooting nrl 22 with it it's going to be a different scope if you're walking through the woods and hit squirrels with it a different scope so yeah. it just all kind of depends on your application there yeah. And that's the same process we go through when someone comes in and it's like, hey, what area should I buy? It's like, well, what do you want to do with it, right? <laughs> There's a lot of different occupations. So kind of directing based on their needs, the gun, the scope, you're exactly right on that. So. Yep. Um, and we have a, a live question asking, uh, why do most air gun optics or optics people use on air guns have such a large eye relief when the air gun produces minimal recoil? Yeah, that's a good that's a great question um i i don't because i mean typically all the scopes that we carry are not air gun specific so um i don't know it, it, it adds a lot of, of, of versatility you know it's the same thing with a with a 22 you know you, you don't want your eye on the scope you don't want like your eye goo showing up on your lens and if you hold your gun like this and you shoot your eye is going to be in one place yeah. If you go and lay down prone, your eyes going to be in a different place. If you're shooting across the hood of a deuce and a half, your eyes going to be someplace else. So having that large eye box with a good eye relief in there, because the longer your eye relief is, the bigger eye box is, it just makes it again not a gun for one single thing. You know, you can build the perfect rifle to shoot off of this bench. It's the third bench from the left at the range, and you only shoot at that one target that's exactly a hundred yards and three inches away. And there's zero wind, you know, you can build a perfect gun for that, but the goal is to have something that you can do more than one exact thing. 
And I guess probably the reason, uh, I guess more to the question, like I think air gunners are drawn to a, a, a bigger eye relief scope is because the air guns come in so many different shapes and sizes and, and configurations that they kind of do need that, like you said, that forgiveness of a, of a, of a bigger eye relief because they may just fit different, like you said, different applications, but that'd be my best answer for that, yeah. So, I think it's just that you like to um, have a big variety of people shoot your guns, and so you need forgiving eye relief because they sit on the gun differently. Right. Everybody wants to borrow your gun whenever because it's so cool. That's why. <laughs> well, especially you know you like you know when they're first you know smaller kids, they they have a lot harder time getting, especially if it's a long length of pole rifle. You know they have a hard time getting on a scope, so having something a little bit forgiving is is definitely helpful for that too. So. So Richie asked, um, we'll do this and it's, it's got a couple different parts. So the first thing, what would be considered long range for a particular caliber and bullet weight? So like, you know, I guess like for your 22s or 177s, what would be long range? Then like, you know, if you got a 30 or a 50. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I would say, you know, 177 a long distance is, is uh, 50 to 70 yards. That's a, that's a, that's a great shot with a 177. It's like a 10 grain pellet. Yeah, so um, so I would say this pellets, a, a long shot, 100 yards is a, is, is, a, is a pretty decent long shot with a pellet because uh, you just, you have very, very little ballistic coefficient. As you guys saw at the match, you know, a little bit of mm -hmm. wind a long way on a pellet. Um, mm -hmm. So I would say that's a long shot. Now, once we start getting into slugs, so what, what is a slug? This is a dumb question that I've been meaning to ask. You say that all the time. I have no clue what you're talking about. <laughs> okay, no problem. So a pellet is a pellet. It's like, you, you know, you have a, a skirt and a head on the pellet, mm. uh, just like what you would see on, yeah, it's like a dome. Yeah. Like yep, a, it's, 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 you have one to show? Where, where a slug I do. Yeah, I'm sure I do in this place. Um, I'll show you. We'll grab some, <laughs> grab some. There's some slugs right over there. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So slugs, though, it, I mean, to answer your question, just like what you would load in your center fires, that, you know, that shape of projectiles, slug versus the pellet is. So I don't know if you can see this or not. Uh, you know, let's see. That's a pellet. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that up there or not, but. Um, oh, yeah, yeah please. Yeah. everyone knows what a, what a pellet hey, is. Yeah. So we've got here, I'll set them on top. Maybe that'll help. Pellet. Come pretty close. Slug. Oh, Maybe. Uh, there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, so that is literally like a, a, a bullet. Yeah, yeah. that's so it's a hollow point. <laughs> yeah. Just like where you kind of shoot a 22 rim fire or, or, or something similar. So. Um, but the slugs, uh, we can, we, they, they have more ballistic coefficients, so they carry their, their energy and they, they, they fly a lot farther. So, um, with, go back to the question, uh, long range shot with, with slugs, like we've shot, I mean, we can, we shoot very small targets at, at 300 yards with very, with 22 and 25 caliber slugs. We've shot a lot further. I mean, there's a, on our YouTube channel, there's one where I shot a little 12 inch Buffalo gong at 650 yards. Um, Damn. So yeah, that, that's a long shot. That's some hang time on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I would say pellets, 100, you know, depending on the calibers, 25, 30 caliber, you get into 200 yards, it's still, you know, that's a long shot for a pellet, obviously. Um, you get into the big bore stuff, like the 50 calibers, um, they can shoot a long ways still as well. Like at our competition, I think our longest target is about 300 yards. Yeah. Um, they're not necessarily meant, uh, big bore rifles for hunting weren't meant to be necessarily long range. They're, they're more of a, you know, a, a hundred yards and in just all power type air gun. So, but they'll, they'll shoot like a, you know, like the muzzle loaders of old anyway, <laughs> not the new ones. <laughs> so that's awesome then what kind of velocities are you guys getting out of some of these so 
we pellets typically um, we we try to stick around 900 to 800 feet per second. Um, I know you'll see on you know a, a gamo brake barrel advertised at 1300 feet per second. A pellet is virtually almost useless at that speed. It just won't fly straight at all. It will spiral or it will whip. Um, so that's more of a kind of a, a thing to sell more guns off the shelf at Walmart. Mm -hmm. say, but um, yeah, the gun, these guns are capable of shooting a lot faster. Yeah, than that. capable of shooting above the speed of sound, but we just don't because it's it doesn't it's not accurate. And, um, but slugs, you can push more closer to that that sound barrier, more like a you know a standard velocity rimfire. That is awesome. <clears throat> so I'm gonna try this. Hajimoto asked if you guys can share what you think the next major advancement will be in air guns. Hmm. What's up, Hodge? <laughs> What's up, Hodge? <laughs> we know Hodge. He's a good friend of ours. Awesome. Um, the next big advancement, um, I think you're going to see a lot of um, a lot more barrel technology. Um, I think you're going to see uh, mainly, honestly, I think the accessories are what I feel is going to really evolve this year. Um, but uh, I think ammo, yeah, ammunition is evolving rapidly. So, I mean, five years ago to shoot a slug out of an air gun, especially small bore, was like, no, <laughs> they won't work. They shoot like crap. Don't even try. Yeah. And we're, we've kind of evolved that, uh, that stuff with, with barrel technology and projectiles and, um, it's come a long way. So I think a lot of that still, uh, projectiles, barrel technology, and um, a lot of the precision tech. precision stuff, accessories and stuff where you're gonna start seeing a lot of influence from guys like, you know, hip that uh, evolve in PRS stuff. So it, that's where I see it going this year, at least in our, in our wheelhouse, uh, um, in the, you know, off the shelf stuff, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. So, <laughs> but uh, that's where I see it evolving for sure. I hope it evolves into cheaper, um, but good air supply. That's been kind of a, a jam in the, in the mix is you know you buy a really nice air gun but you still have to fill it with high pressured air, and it's not necessarily a cheap option because you have to buy a really nice uh, big tank like that mm -hmm. over a, a type of compressor. And um, so I hope they evolve with that stuff. That's that's where I hope we can start seeing more affordable ways to okay. fill the air guns. Accessibility of air. Yeah, and space. accessibility of air. So. Yeah, I know from all of my time in paintball that like that is the hardest thing is getting a good air supply. That's why I have a random scuba tank sitting around my bedroom because, you know, sometimes you just need air and well, I ran into a good deal on a scuba tank and I haven't touched a paintball gun in eight years, nine years, but I got an air tank still. I just, you just can't get rid of like a 3,500 PSI tank. Like you just got to keep it. There's always a use for it somewhere, right? <laughs> exactly. And see, now I'm probably going to end up with an air gun and it'll be cheaper since I have a tank already, and, you know? See, there you go. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about some of the other... Uh, Oh man, Chad Heckler, the winner of the AG Cup. What do we call him? Mr. AG Cup 2020. What year was that? 2021 champion, Chad Heckler. That seemed yep. cooler than dry firing. So uh, John asked, when you guys shoot out super far, um, I'm not sure what the drop is, but are you guys using like prism erectors or anything like that or just crazy adjustable bases to hit those super far shots? So the, the prisms haven't been um, real popular in the air gun world yet, only because uh, like the sight rails, you, know, you didn't have a place to mount them necessarily. But as you can see, that stuff's evolving. We've got big long rails on air guns now a little bit. Uh, but yeah, mostly crazy adjustable mounts. Yeah, he is the, <laughs> yeah, mo the, he is the Moab on that yeah, 650 one. Yeah, I had to use crazy mounts on that 650 yard shot. I think so. he used almost all of it. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like, yeah, it's 300, 300 MOA or something. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it yeah. Just pointed like that. <laughs> I was looking at my moderator through the scope. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, that y'all's moderators are awesome. So is that are they just thread on like a like a suppressor, or are they like pinned and welded or something crazy? They they are threaded on. They uh, intentionally use different sizes of <laughs> <laughs> threads and thread pitches because they are in no way, shape, or form for a firearm. So they are all stamped air guns. So, yeah. so, <laughs> so and they'll probably blow up in your face if you try to use them on a firearm. So. <laughs> Um, blow up in your face. I'm trying to think what what's next. So um, back to kind of the similarity, some of the other stuff you can use. I know we talked about you guys just sell the same bipods we use. Do they? So with all that stuff going on with the the tank and the barrel and everything, how do you guys attach your bipods? Do you guys stick arc rails on it or? Um, it's it's yeah we we we've really moved it to arca mostly uh, still a lot of picatinny but arca is uh is the preferred method for sure it's just so simple because then you could drop it on a tripod i know you guys had them displayed on tripods one night up at the uh our little party we had going on and of course yeah. you got to uh, yeah they the accessories um for the air guns are um getting to be very similar and cross over a lot so yeah, look, what's that? They're boundless. There's so many. I mean, that's one thing if you're training to be able to ha use your same bipod if you're like practicing, you know, deploying the legs, yeah. flip them up. You can use the same one for both. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. would say, like, when we came into this, there wasn't much of the precision style shooting in our world. It was mainly paper bench rest. And that's kind of been our main goal is to push air gunning to shooters, right? And so yeah. I think we've done a pretty good job. Like if our, our um, competition we put on, there's a lot of those aspects that Justin, you mentioned that. Um, but that's been our goal is to bring air gunning to shooters, to the wider audience of shooters. So um, yeah. hopefully we can keep doing that, I think. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. I, I, yeah, not to sit and toot, toot our own horn, but I feel like uh, we've, We've changed the industry in the last five years because we have been the ones that pioneered that uh, that type of shooting with air guns. But and now you know we got vendors. You know, like Tom from Armageddon Gear. He's he's like, hey, I, I like this. Let's let's build stuff that can cross over with air guns too, or be air gun specific. And um, you know, and with bipods and tripods and you know rails, barrel tuners. I mean, so it yeah, it, it's. Uh, Game changers. You can't forget about the game changers. Game, you can't forget about the game changer. You got to have a game changer. Yep. Yep. That's for sure. And an Uno bag. Yeah. That's right. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so. Ajimoto asked if we can speak to some of the legal freedoms the air guns offer um, for some legally challenged folks that can still want to enjoy fit shooting. Yeah. Um, so that's a that's a great point. Um, yeah, they are, the legal bench, are, they are absolutely in no way, shape or form considered a firearm. Um, that changes laws drastically between air gun, firearm, and who can own them and what can be shot with them. So that would be a big, big difference. I mean, I don't know all the ins, ins and outs of, uh, you know, restrictions as far as different types of crimes and stuff maybe, but um, the biggest thing is absolutely not classified as a firearm. Um, so big, big difference. So you can shoot it in the city limits. Depending on the city. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I won't say it's an open thing. <laughs> Let me put it this way. It's easier to get away with shooting in the city. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and there and th there's no no ATF involvement or anything like that. So I just go onto www.utahairguns.com yes. and click on something, add to cart, and it'll be here just like I'm ordering something off Amazon. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. So do y'all have a brick and mortar store for those that are um, out located by y'all? We absolutely do. We have um, we we have a thirteen thousand square foot facility now. We're just about at another 7,000 square feet actually to it. So, wow. Yeah, it's uh, the biggest air gun showroom in the world that I know of. So, it's uh, pictures of it right here. Yeah. We're sitting in it, but you know, <laughs> hey. <laughs> well, see, I see that, that one wall looks great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
We've got so, an indoor air gun range, which is it's pretty awesome. It's desert themed, so we wheelbarrowed a ton of sand in there and haven't done much of the sport. <laughs> It, yeah. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, that is um, awesome. Yeah, it looks like a it looks like the West Desert out here, and um, it feels more like a shooting gallery in there. We've got reactive steel through it, and uh, fun flanking targets, and thirty-five yards with target retrievers. It's a it's a really cool, unique range. That sounds awesome. You're gonna have to send me pictures of that some at some point in time, or I'm sure I can probably Google them somewhere. Yeah. So, so my friend Philip wants to know um, if in this giant showroom. If you have two FX impact M3s with 700 millimeter <laughs> barrels and 22 cal. Uh, you say I have almost that whole description <laughs> yeah. other than the 700 millimeter barrels. Um, that is the 22 caliber in 700 millimeter in the M3 is the most sought after and back ordered gun we have. Um, so no, we don't have those in stock. Uh, we, we get about Oh, 150 guns every two weeks or so. So we're trying to chip away at those numbers, but uh, no, that's the quick <laughs> answer. No, I do have them in almost every other configuration yeah. though. There's a lot of demand. And then uh, with everything this year with COVID, there's, you know, yeah. shipping and manufacturing. So their FX is definitely stepping up though. Um, we're getting a lot more guns from all the manufacturers actually yeah. so i think yeah everyone's kind of starting to yeah. get rolling again so which is good have y'all been affected a lot by the supply chain shortages um we have probably not as much as as a lot of other industries but yeah we we've, we've had it hit us a little bit this year um fortunately we, we were able to kind of balance it with hey we have uh you know this manufacturer coming in here <laughs> we have this many kind of balancing like, you know, luckily we always had stuff, you know, uh, That's to sell throughout. but yeah, it's, it's, it's been difficult. Our, our ordering times for things that we source from overseas, um, you know, for, went from like an easy, like a uh, six to eight week thing to like, like six, to eight months, six <laughs> to eight month thing, you know, yeah. look in your crystal ball and decide what you want in six to eight months. So. Yeah. It's kind of hurt everybody. Yeah, and I mean, if you're and if you're a small company trying to get rolling in this, where you don't have the cash flow to invest big to just so that you have product, hard. Uh, it's hard. <laughs> it's be tough. So, yeah, no fun. You decided to kick me out of that. That was interesting. Uh, we were definitely fortunate during the rough time that um, I think, like a lot of the shooting and outdoor industries, where. You know, people had time working from home, looking at hobbies, obviously yeah. investing in shooting sports. So, you know, thankfully, we, yeah. we like I say, we benefited because obviously it's been a tough time for a lot of people, but so we were very fortunate. <laughs> yeah, especially, I think, working, people working from home in quarantine. Yeah, a lot of people what were shooting. What can I home. shoot at my house? <laughs> yeah. Oh, good America. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's fun. So if if somebody wanted to get into it, like... I wanted to get into it and I don't know what to get, you know, people that read the AG cup and saw it and they're like, man, I really want to get that. Like, what all do you need to really get? What all to get started, to have everything I would need to be able to go in my backyard and shoot, even though I'd get kicked out of my HOA. Um, <laughs> but if I wanted to get something and be able to buy it, what would I get? Like, which rifle should I buy? What ammo do I get? Do I get the slugs or the pellets? Um, so, how do I get an air fill system? Where do I get it? The tank filled? Like, talk to me like a complete beginner. If I was an idiot that had never done this, what would you tell me to do? I would say, um, first off, the uh, uh, best thing would just actually pick up the phone and call us because um, we do have people, like everybody here that answers the phone is an expert at this stuff. So, um, cause what would happen is if you were the beginner calling and asking, what should I get? We'd say, well, again, where, you know, how big is that backyard in that HOA? You know? <laughs> no, I mean, where, where are you shooting? What are you shooting? What, what do you want out of it? Um, so what you would have to basically get though, is you would, you would buy the air rifle, uh, you'd buy mounts an optic of some sort, uh, an air source of some sort, whether it be, uh, 
a single use compressor, meaning like it runs on 12 volt or 110 that is meant to just fill a gun that not want to say fill a big bottle, but, or you buy an air bottle if you have places to have it filled. So places like paintball places, air gun places, uh, scuba shops, sometimes fire stations. sometimes fire stations and get it, you know. So it's always good to have a firefighter friend. Yeah, it's <laughs> always good to have a firefighter friend. 100%. Um, and, then, and then your ammunition, whether it be pellets or slugs, I, you know, and we, again, that would go along with the questions, where do you shoot? What do you want to shoot? What's the, you know, what are you hunting or what are you, how far yes. are you shooting? Which would be best, pellets or slugs? You know, if you're going to be shooting prairie dogs at 200 yards, let's start looking at something that shoots with a little bit more power that can push a slug at that distance. So, yeah, I think budget as well. Um, yeah, I mean, budget, yeah, you know, we have great guns that start, you know, for entry level around $300, you know, for the gun, all the way up to 2000 So just like any, you know, shooting uh, industry, there's, it sky's the limit, but, you know, you can get into it fairly cheap, honestly. Yeah, but, but those are the basics what you yeah. need to get as a yeah. beginner is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So well, like, airplanes are just as complicated as as real guns and are very uh, application specific, I guess. <clears throat> it's not a just buy one and that's all of it. You need, there are specifications for different uses, yeah. just like real guns, so. Yeah, for sure. And once you get into the really high end stuff, you have options of buying one gun that can do everything, which is really cool too, so. Or buy everything. Instead, uh, or buy one of everything. <laughs> I like that. We won't complain. Yeah, we won't complain about that. So, 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 like you know, in in the handgun world, you know, you got your Glocks. Like you know, someone comes, they're like, oh, you know, I want to start shooting. Whether it's like, you know, I want something to take to the range and shoot a piece of paper ten times in a row, or you know, I want a gun to keep on a nightstand. It's like, okay, cool, go buy you a Glock. You know, it's it's nothing fancy, it's nothing special, but it works all the time. Is there like a a Glock of the air gun world, something that's not, you know, five grand, not $200, but something that's like a decent, like all around plinker for the backyard. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you have like FX Dreamline. Like, yeah. There's it, great getting, guns getting like, into the, high, the medium to high end. Yeah. There's, there's stuff like your, your Air Force stuff um, where they're, they're, they're a really good gun been on been around a long time accurate made in america then you have we so this this streamline looks pretty cool i'm not on the website shopping right now or anything but yeah, yeah. so like most of the manufacturers we sell to kind of have a budget uh, range you know, a budget range right they'll have a gun that starts at mm -hmm. 100 and then their high end yeah. goes up to 1800 so i would say like a thousand dollars you can get a really really good air gun in that range um but obviously as you get into the higher end stuff different features there, yeah. yeah and there's like in the high-end world i would say yeah there's some blocks of that yeah of that and there's some, you know whatever <laughs> how i don't compare it to but um yeah no high points though no high points there there are some high points <laughs> out there we don't we don't we, we, uh, we try not to carry those <laughs> Nothing, nothing against high points. Anything we sell, we we stand behind as a, a yeah. decent gun for sure. So we could carry a lot more, but yeah, we carry stuff that we we like to shoot. You know, trust for sure. <laughs> yeah, that that's always good, and that that's one of my favorite things about companies ran by, you know, whether it's a shooting company or a truck company or anything, a, a company that's ran by and staffed by people that like actually use the stuff and have people to bring them beverages that just kind of appear in from the side of the screen and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> have a good, have have a good staff. Good staff here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, it, it really does help that people that like are passionate about what they do and that'll be like, no, dude, listen, I own one of those. The reason why we don't sell this is because I bought one. It sucked. And I don't want you guys to have to deal with that. Um, I, will, John, I will say that too is um, that is one thing you will get that I've kind of demanded from day one. If you work here, you will your shoot. You will match the passion that we all have for it, or you really don't fit in. Um, and uh, that's it's 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 just a, a that's how that's that's the standard that we have. Is if you're not passionate about it, hit the road, and 
luckily we have a bunch of passionate guys here so it's it's a good it's it's fun it's fun to be around people as passionate as we are so. let's say it sounds like something easy to be passionate about yeah it is it is for sure um so john asked a question i know on like some bolt action rifles like if i take my center fire last year it was a, a six or wow um, my years are just kind of a blur here pre-covid it was a, a six five creed more and then i got a new barrel spun up for it and now it's a six gt um are there any air rifles like that where you know you start out with one or does the volume of the air and valves and all that stuff make that more difficult no there's um there's quite a few air guns nowadays that are made to be switch caliber air guns that are adjustable power um, tunability and everything so you can switch i mean some of them might even have you know like for instance the fx line has actual barrel liners so the actual rifle part of the barrels they are interchangeable you can change twist rates and choke sizes and, and really tune it for that projectile so oh, that's awesome yeah yeah um one more from hajimoto he asked if you guys could speak to the american air gun collaboration and uh maybe speak to the history of that as well. Air Gunner? Oh, is that, what, yeah, I think American Air Gunner. Yeah, so that's a uh, show that's on the Outdoor cha Channel that we uh, are the flagship sponsor of this year. So the first year. So we are super excited about that to collaborate, you know, support the industry. And yeah, it's cool being on TV too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so. Yeah, the American Air Gunner, it's been a TV show that's been around for probably, what, nine, ten years? Yeah, quite a while. Um, but, uh, we're yeah, we're excited to be a part of that, collaborating now, because, um, no offense to the show in the past, but it's been more speaking to just the, the, paid, the paid audience, you know, what, what the, the sponsor of the show just kind of ran what they did, and, um, to be, it was a good show, but we want to drive that in more of a direction where you can get to see a little bit of it all instead of just what's been around for 20 years. We want to show what they can do now. And mm -hmm. so, and that's what I, you'll see that this year on that, on that show. So it's on the outdoor channel. So. That's awesome. I, I never even knew that was a show, but then again, I, well, I don't have cable, but also the one time I was actually on the outdoor channel on on shooting usa i've had to put up a facebook post hey do any of my friends have the outdoor channel i'll bring beer if i could come and watch it <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um hey you can get the friendly app and i'm not plugging the app but you that's that's how i watch it is on the friendly app so uh and then I'll, have, I'll, I'll have to check that out because i watch uh shooting usa they just have their own thing on you know you go on their website and you just download the one episode and yeah. you can watch it well uh, so if you do that go download the shooting usa episode that just uh aired about a, a month ago which was at our mac our air gun competition really covered it yeah it was awesome <laughs> yeah the rocky mountain air gun challenge so yeah it aired on what uh is it about november 4th or something yeah something, something like, like that. that a month or two ago so yeah check that out it's they, i don't they, have to do that awesome job scavin did an awesome job covering the event it was fantastic footage so let's say they, they generally do do an awesome job it's always fun especially you know being out with ag cup with them they're you yeah. know learning how the pros do it yeah for sure Although i i got them this year though you know why so i got i got three cameras on my iphone and my iphone zooms further than john scott's iphone zooms so i'm pretty <laughs> much a a tv professional now oh, right there buddy <laughs> you're watching scout and step it up pal <laughs> yeah you need that 13 pro max before you come out next time <laughs> I, got, I got it for christmas too <laughs> nice yeah. it is awesome i love that thing um i've had a couple questions about about hunting i know we touched on that a little bit but like what's what's common i know that like people have taken them to africa and shot ginormous animals with them um, but like, what's common things to hunt with, uh, with an air rifle? Yeah. So obviously a lot of small game, you know, with the smaller, what I would say, it's smaller caliber stuff. Uh, you know, we shoot a lot of stuff like ground squirrels and rabbits, things like that. So you have, you know, the varmint and depending where you're at kind of depends on the laws there, but, 
uh, a lot of pest control with air guns. Um, and then a lot of deer, obviously it depends on the state laws. Um, most guys are shooting bigger caliber, obviously bigger caliber stuff at, at you know, deer size game. In Utah, we passed for, um, there's actually air guns that shoot arrows. So as of right now, you can shoot deer with arrows and yeah, I was lucky enough to get my big game. <laughs> yeah, he shot his first deer yeah. ever with, with the arrow shooters. <laughs> yeah, it was that's awesome. awesome. Yeah. yeah. I would say the steady diet for a, for a, for an air gun hunting platform is is the small, you know, pests and rodent control environments. Yeah. So raccoons, skunks, birds, coyotes. squirrels, coyotes, stuff like that. Yeah, I knew I knew at AG Cup I was sitting there texting our facilities manager telling them we needed to get one to get rid of our uh, our bird population. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're good for that. <laughs> yeah, we do a lot like Eurasian does, starlings, those invasive yeah. birds, depending just where you're at. Um, I've gone to war with squirrels before. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, do a lot of that. Yeah. I've gone to war with squirrels before. They're just mean. Like, they go in the tree and they make fun of you. <laughs> <laughs> they, like, chew the insides out of your lawn furniture, and then they go up in the tree and look at you like... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, humans may get away with it, but a squirrel, I'm shooting you in the face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Squirrels are mean. Yeah, I agree. I don't like squirrels. So, I especially hate when they when they bark at you after you try to shoot them and miss. Yeah, oh, all yeah. right. I will say one of the funnest hunting experiences you can have in your life is run night vision or thermal on an air gun at night. That'd be fun. It's a whole other world, I'm telling you. You're missing out if you're not. Wait, can we shoot hogs from a helicopter with them? Yeah. I think I was the first ever, I'm not bragging, but I think I was the first ever. I think so. I did shoot, I did shoot a hog from a helicopter with an air gun back in 16, yeah, 16 or something. Yeah, you can do it. All right. I, so I mean, I don't have a helicopter or hogs. I have friends with both. So. Hunting license, but yeah, it'd be fun. Okay. So, so we're going to Utah? I know guys. I know people make that happen. So, so Aaron Hip says he wants me to have Justin tell about how accurate they are so people can understand a comparison between the air gun versus their 22 trainers. Oh, okay. I'd love to. Um, accuracy wise, um, they, you know, like I said, we can sit here and tell you all day how accurate they are, but until you shoot one to understand, they are extremely accurate. I mean, they're they're as accurate as as any uh, competition twenty two. Um, yeah, I said it. They are. But um, like for instance, we'll we'll play around and light we'll light matches with them at fifty yards. They're that accurate. So. Um, Right on line with, with your high end 22 require, I would say. Let's say, how far away was that KYL? Wasn't that 75? I think we had one at 45 and at 65, maybe or something. Okay, maybe it was 65. I mean, I think Jen hit the quarter inch target at 65 yards with it yeah. after being behind the gun for like five minutes. So, yeah, it's, it's not uncommon for us to have people come in and say, this is ridiculous. My air gun's the most accurate rifle I own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's pretty accurate. And then, so like with our um, precision guns, to be able to get that kind of accuracy, we have to tune our ammo to our guns. So do the high-end air rifles require tuning to shoot different pellets or slugs? Yes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So yeah. and we do that here. Um, you know, we'll have customers calling with specific needs on ammo, what they're wanting to do. So yeah, it's basically similar to reloading, but we're, you know, instead of powders, we're messing with air pressures, valving, stuff like that. So. Yeah, but I would say, I mean, but you can buy a high-end air gun out of the box that will shoot very accurate. I mean, you know, obviously, can it be better? Yeah, if you really get after it, but yeah, you can buy, you can buy them out of the box that are incredibly accurate, so. That's awesome. Yeah. It is awesome. <laughs> Pretty cool. It'd be nice to not have to like reload. And, yeah. yeah, I know. Like, well, no, I think that's a little bit too much velocity. You know, I'm assuming there's a spot in there and you just like stick an Allen key or a screwdriver in and yeah. like, now let's try this shot. Yeah, that, 
we do that a lot actually <laughs> there's a lot of yeah just adjusting it on the fly it's it's really cool a lot so, of time through the chrono <laughs> yeah yeah chronograph is, is important to have when we're tuning like that but yeah yeah they're they're very tunable that way get the so how do you on. enter in like how do you get your dope for these rifles how do you so um like I know with ours, we have a Kestrel and you have the BC and you have the bullet and you have this and that. So with this, how do you? Uh, honestly, the exact same way. Um, like for instance, Streelock Pro, they have air gun projectile data already. Oh, cool. Uh, and they're building a database almost, you know, monthly. They, they stay up on it really well. So um, there's other apps out that, you know, I think Shooter has, has air gun projectiles as well. You know, as far as pellets and slugs and different makes and you know, and they've they've got a database of you know what they are BC and all the input you'd need for for your ballistics program. Yep. So same way. exact same way. <laughs> Check your speeds, verify your your BC, and and plug it in. So easy then. It's I mean, it's good that it's the same and it's very similar to you know what we're used to. So yeah, it is. It is all the same inputs. You know, pressure Except for I just don't need to hunt for primers or powder or yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to hunt for components and you don't have to clean them all the time. Yeah, that's about well, that's the best part. Yeah, yeah. yeah just out of it. <laughs> all right. I'm, I'm gonna share my screen real quick. Oh, maybe I don't know how to do that on a Mac. I think this is the part where I I struggle. Hold on, I'm gonna try because I so I did some Googling after you guys talked about how awesome your range was and I found a picture and it really is awesome <laughs> all right there's all sorts of like all right let's see all right share nope maybe we're not going to share <laughs> yep nope that ain't gonna work I'm gonna have to figure out how to do that but y'all's range is awesome I, I googled it your range looks sweet and your showroom looks super awesome oh allow zoom to share your screen uh, oh, What's okay, that? yeah. There you go. Might be it. I wouldn't want to do it. <laughs> I can't remember. Really Should we play the Jeopardy tune? Uh, yeah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, come by the shop. <laughs> okay, yeah. It says I need to quit Zoom and relaunch it in order to grant you permission to do that. Yeah, maybe don't do that. Yeah. Post it in the comments. If it's a picture, post it in the comments of the show. There we go. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Y'all can see it. Yeah. Work smarter, not harder. That's right. And that's where that's what your job is. You're supposed to be the smart one. I'm not sure that I stand up for that. <laughs> mm -mm. So, do you see um, air gun matches as a future here? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, I think uh, that is the future of a lot of shooting. Is um, you're, you're going to see a lot more air gun matches. Not that it's going to take over, but um, I think you're going to see it grow as big for sure. Um, we're in the is there somewhere to look for matches? Like if, like y'all are in Utah, but I'm on the East Coast, so if I wanted to know where somewhere in my area is, there an organization or anything that has like where you can look for matches? Um, yeah, I mean, we, we're in the NRL 22 now. Um, you, you can, there's an Aragon division in the, in the NRL 22. Um, I am going to talk to Shannon. We, we spoke about that a little bit at the cup as much as he wants to be talked to at the cup about other things other than the cup. So, um, but, uh, you know, we discussed that about, about getting it in the PRS room fire as well. And, um, and then I think, you know, we're trying to put together that where we, we want to do a, a divisional series as well with the air gun competitions. I mean, obviously we have our big one in Utah. Um, there's a couple others around the country throughout the year, but um, yeah, I, I do. I, I think it's going to, I think it's going to take off. The more people start crossing over those competitions, I think they are going to quite enjoy it. And I mean, there's, there's money to be, had in the air gun competitions as well. Um, 
our grand prize and our bench rest alone was 21,000 last year. And wow. Yeah. So, and not then, shabby. Right. So, and I, I only see that growing. So, yeah. But we are working on getting a, a divisional series as well as a finale. Man, I would love to have it down in Tennessee. I'd love to eventually have an Aragon competition that's that's held down there at Shannon's place. That'd be awesome. Aragons at KM. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> there, oh, that 150 yard mover could get a workout. Absolutely. Absolutely. Be a, that would be a phenomenal Aragon stage. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. It would be cool if there were some uh, team ups like a center fire match, but the day before is an air gun match, you know, so you could go and you could shoot an air gun the first day and then do center fire. Yeah, I agree. And, and that's all stuff that, you know, plans for 2022, a lot of that, um, doing, whether it's, we just set up as side matches, uh, to co-brand with, the, with other shoots or whatever, but, uh, we'd love to let, I mean, love to introduce people that way let them have a have a shoot the day before um their center fire matches with they're going to be awesome remind me after the show um, and i got a plan for that um i, I got an idea um but then also like you know if you guys get linked up with prs 22 um here at cool acres um that's an hour and 45 minutes from us they do saturday is a prs regional center fire match and then sunday is a PRS 22 match. So if there's an air gun division in that, then you can shoot your center fire on Saturday and then have your choice in between your rim fire or your air gun for Sunday. Yeah, perfect. Great. See if I, if I can have Tom and Jennifer, you know, get 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 to Shannon's ear as much as I can. I think we got it. I think we got it with those two. In. We'll be in. <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna randomly call him like next week. Be like, dude, th that's awesome. The, so we're hanging out with the guys from Utah Air Guns, and they told us that you're gonna have uh, air <laughs> rifle and, and rim fire next year. That's gonna be great. Oh man, I'm sure I would get a phone call immediately. Listen, dirtbag. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, what was that about? <laughs> yeah. We we planted the seed, but I, you know. There's a time and a place to discuss things, and it sure isn't at the AG Cup while someone's trying to run it. <laughs> so. Yeah, a little tact, I guess. <laughs> yep, exactly. Are, how are we doing on lives, Greg? Let's see. I'm going to let now. We are good on lives. All right. Well, I think we can wrap it up to shout outs then. Um, Greg, usually start us. What you got for shout outs? Yep, so I got GSL suppressors sitting there on the end of my Ruger 1022. Um, speaking of the Ruger 1022, the awesome PDC custom chassis on that. This is chassis number three of my obnoxious lime green collection, by the way. They're all the same color. They are beautiful. They are just beautiful triplets. Um, shooters and sharpshooters of Augusta, our local indoor and outdoor ranges here in Augusta. If you're heading into town for Mammoth this weekend, they got a 200 yard open range. You can swing by and make sure you didn't bang your gun up on the uh, on the way there. And um, Shooters of Augusta has powder. That was the next thing I was going to say. So, uh, Shooters of Augusta are in, or no, 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 Shooters World powder, awesome powder, and it shoots great. And I've used it always. And I just swung by Shooters of Augusta last week and they had a full case of it. I went and picked up some clean shot because at some point in time, I'm going to get around to loading some more pistol uh, pistol rounds. Again, all this loading ammo, these guys, look, look they're kind of grinning. They're like, we just buy this little <laughs> dip can and it has bullets in it and we're good to go. Um, Hunter's HD Gold. Um, I have horrible vision, but not when I'm wearing those glasses. They're awesome. Check them out. Um, fix It Sticks because... Um, I like taking stuff apart and then putting it back together. So that stuff is awesome. And Bortec, because unlike you, we don't really say bad words on here. You buttheads that don't have to clean the powder and the carbon and the lead and the copper. We do, um, but I like nice tools. So I use Bortec to do it. Yeah, I agree. Very true. Yeah, I was just at Shooters. 
Monday night. I don't know what day it is. I just went to shooters one evening and they were like, tell her by we have um, powder. We have a bunch of powder. So anyway, if you need powder and you're in Augusta, go check them out. Nice. Do y'all do y'all have any shout outs from Utah Air Guns? Hmm. Well, I would shout out um, for sure um, Tom uh, from Armageddon Gear because he introduced us basically to you guys. So thank you to him uh, for that. Um, uh, all of our, you know, really supportive vendors, I would say, uh, you know, FX Air Guns, Air Force Air Guns, um, Air Max Arms, AccuTac, um, yeah, JSB. Athlon, Athlon, uh, yeah, there's a lot. So, yeah, that All was a them. horrible shout out by <laughs> us, but yeah, uh, I'd say our customers do. Gallo Tech walls, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I do like those walls. Those are cool. Yeah. Very cool walls. Yeah. So. All right. Well, we were talking. We're going to see y'all at Shot Show because you're going to get there by three o'clock. <laughs> Just because you have an appointment with me. <laughs> Um, <laughs> they're like, no, we have to get there on time. We'll be there. We'll be there. We'll be there. <laughs> yeah. That's we'll right. Get, get up early. Wouldn't miss it. That's right. So I know we'll be seeing y'all at SHOT next week. So if anybody is going to SHOT show, what booth are y'all going to be at? Oh, geez. Well, <laughs> we're, 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 we're floating. We're, we don't have Probably a... Probably floating. Yeah, we're, we're, yeah, we're floating. So we're not... Uh, we're, are we're any not. of your products going to be at the Air Force booth? They sell Air Force. Yeah, we yeah. yeah we sell Air Force and rapid air weapons. So there's stuff. We'll, yeah, they'll they'll have it on display. We'll sure. be there quite a bit, probably. Yeah, so. we'll be we'll be around that booth a lot. So. Yeah. So Air Force Air Guns um, is there yeah. at Shot Show, and they have a booth. Accutex booth a bit with Felipe. So. You know, okay. It's there as well. So yeah. So go check them out while y'all are at Shot Show if you're there, or catch up with them and say hey. But check out the air guns at Air Force Air Guns for sure. So we will see y'all next week at that, or not next week, I guess two weeks. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Two awesome. weeks from today, three o'clock. Um, Tell you what, if you want to, for all the people watching, uh, we'd love to do a promo code. All right. If you guys want to place an order from, from seeing this episode, we'll create a promo code. What's it going to be? <laughs> <laughs> uh, on the spot. I'll come up with it and then you guys can post Mindset. it. Does that work? <laughs> Mindset. You can do that. Ooh, Mindset. Mindset. There we go. Mindset. Mindset. We'll get it set up. All right. Not set up yet because this is live and I just did it on, you know, impulse. <laughs> How great. much of a promo is it? 50%. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. 50% off your, your shipping. No, I don't know. We'll um, do free shipping. We'll do free shipping. All right. So, Promo code mindset for free shipping. Yep. All right. How long is it going to be active? A week. A one week. week. One week. I've got one week from today to get orders in at Utah Air Guns. And tell us the website one more time. UtahAirGuns.com. That is very difficult to remember. I'm glad <laughs> that you made it easy. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right. And I just want to shout y'all out for coming and spending two hours of your Tuesday night with us. Um, doing the show we are glad to kind of get to hang and chat with you and get the word out about some air guns and hopefully we'll be seeing y'all at matches in the future absolutely we look forward to it and we we're honored to be on here i was looking at some of the guests you guys have had in the past and i'm like i'm not worthy of this I'm, why are they picking us to be on here? <laughs> we're an equal opportunity podcast we and like to have lots of that us you know get to get to be part of that so thank, thank you guys, you, guys very much. <laughs> you are welcome all right and with that that'll be a wrap for episode 362 and we will see y'all next week awesome sounds Peace good out. we'll see you then <laughs>